Yo dog, Kenny Boucher here, Next Level Painting, hitting you up on the literal best of all days, coming to you from the Beat Slab in Hollywood, California during this pandemic. We're doing it again with a realistic green orc workup. You can see over the years we've done many orc models and none of them can be considered realistic in any way. No version of that word can be applied to all these orcs and many more we've done over the years. So I wanna throw a shout out to the Real Ash Man, patron supporter of our private coaching tier. We are working on this miniature together for Black Sun Miniatures, this awesome jacked cyberpunk-esque orc. Now what we're gonna do is use brown. Brown is the best color. We're gonna be using Pro Krill from Monument and Creature Caster, dark purple, mahogany, camo green, camo bright green. Now shake it up first, look at it. There we go. So this is gonna be different, a departure. But he said he wanted to do something realistic. We've been doing our private coaching together and this video goes out to you, my man. So we're gonna mix the dark purple and the mahogany together. Basically be building a purpley brown, a maroon. Now, the reason he's pre-highlighted like this is because me and Ashman, we did a class already where I was helping him out with these types of Zenithal uh, pre-shade techniques. We're not really gonna use the pre-shade for this. We're gonna build up the brown in its entirety and then the greens. The reason I like to do those grayscales, though, is it's like basically priming the model with all the correct colors, whites, grays, and blacks. Now, what I'm doing after I've established our first base coat is I thin down the paint in the pot, and then I'm gonna sling on a second coat, and this is gonna help shove it into all those nooks and crannies and those crevices without building up too much over the details. And you can see we're doing a pretty good job of not getting too much overspray on the rest of the model. That is not necessary, but later when we start cutting in, slicing in the other colors, that gray scale is really gonna help the paint stick and let us reach in with the airbrush to do even more. Now the first step here in our color combining formula is we're gonna add some of that dark camo uh, green, whichever one, the darker version of the two. And we're gonna swirl it into the dirty paint water that was left over from the purple and the mahogany. And this is gonna create an interesting color combo. We're gonna thin it down, use a little Vallejo Flow Improver, use a little water. I like to work real thin when we're doing it this way. Now we're gonna kind of just recreate the highlights you already saw on the model in grayscale. From the top down, getting the tops of the shoulders, getting his head, letting it skitter down, catch the features of his face, maybe hit his pecs, skitter down, hit that six pack, my man is jacked. We're gonna make sure to hit all the correct angles, let it blend in with that mahogany purple mix, that maroon mix we created. And it's gonna blend in nicely because at the end of the day, when you're airbrushing this thin, it's just glazing. And glazing is gonna let the previous colors show through and interact. It's gonna have, you know, something to do with the next stages. Same deal. We're just gonna reinforce, go through as it dries, do a second coat. It just establish a solid color base. This is not like a pre highlight where it's ultra thin and the grayscale showing through. All right. Now we're gonna dump the pot, leave some of the dirty paint water, and we're gonna throw some of that brighter camo green in the mix. And this is gonna be married together. Part of the next level painting system, when you airbrush getting these beautiful transitions to be super smooth is color combining and thin it down. The only difference between a lot of the other models and this is we are trying to keep it purposefully muted, little on the realistic side. Now we're just gonna rinse repeat. We're gonna attack the model in the exact same way, we're gonna to try to do a little bit less though. We don't wanna completely repaint the guy. We wanna make sure to leave some of the previous green blends, browns and purples in the shadows and just make them look smooth and pretty and understated. You're gonna might have to do this one or two times. We are working ultra thin. Now we're gonna dump the pot, reset with more of the camo green, very little dirty paint water left over and we're gonna do it again. This will probably be our brightest green. Get real thin, so that way you can get real close. You can turn the PSI down if you have a regulator valve, whatever. And we're gonna get it tight, really direct the flow, slice up those pecs, slice up those uh, deltoids, the head, just really start aiming the flow, getting a little bit more precise as you go. And it's really gonna give him a nice look. This guy looks great like this. You could paint him like an action figure and just paint him like that, do all the sections of the model like this all good but we are painting miniature we're going to go much further so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to introduce a little olive flesh into the mix and i'm going to show you guys a bonus technique we're going to create a very bright um desaturated basically a pastel green i, I don't like it 
but I'm gonna show you kind of like an on the fly pre-highlight filtering technique that I use. And we're gonna use this to just up the ante on the highlights and some of his muscles. Bonus technique. So we're gonna just recreate some of these highlights real quick, pow, 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 pow. Hit the head, hit the delts, hit the pecs, hit the abs. You can see it's definitely highlighting him on the value scale, but it's definitely stolen some of his vibrancy and giving him kind of a pastel look. Don't like it, that's fine, that's part of it. So what we did was we upped the brightness there on the value chart, and now we completely reset the pot, are going back to the camo green, gonna thin it down, and we are gonna glaze it in like a pre-highlight. And what it's gonna do is filter over that olive flesh we did, be a much brighter green than it would normally be, but still maintain its hue saturation. Kind of just filtering over it. So Pre-highlighting doesn't have to be done first. It can be done at any stage in the game. Make sure it's real thin, maximum thinness, maximum flow. Here we go, I love it. Basically just water. And we're just gonna recreate what we've just done and you're gonna see this green's gonna stick to it and stay a little brighter for your efforts and be real natural. It's gonna look real good, just like that. Beautiful looking orc skin, I love it. I mean, I would just leave it like this and then just slice in everything and then I would end up making a combo book model again. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna definitely take a more realistic wash. We're really gonna try to mute them down, really live in a different world than normal. Now, bonus, bonus technique, tan flesh. This is another way of brightening the skin. So we're gonna introduce basically a standard white guy flesh tone back to our green, swirl that together. It's a different color, it's like a drab. Now we're gonna introduce some ochre to the mix or a golden brown if that's all you have and it's gonna shift it again. Then we're gonna add some pure yellow to the mix and we've created this new highlight that you can let this ride. You can do it this way and let it just ride and you're gonna get another cool look. Now the reason I'm doing this is showing you guys two different ways of creating highlights in this spectrum and what we're gonna do is set up for the wash game. Now we're gonna lean on an old school technique, guys. Once we lay these highlights down to the exact same way, we're gonna go back to basics on this model. Now, I might have used an oil wash, uh, which I think I would have preferred, but my man Ashman, he don't got the multi-black. He's got the full line of Army Painter washes, which is still amazing. So we're gonna lean on an old school technique, the gloss varnish trick. I'm gonna show you guys how to properly gloss varnish your model. We use a little airbrush thinner, and a little bit of Vallejo gloss. We're gonna get it real thin, but not too thin. You kinda wanna just do the minimum thinness. We're gonna spray it down on the skin, and the second it looks wet, we're done, okay? If you start to see any milky color, milky residue appear, you've gone too far. As soon as it looks wet, move on. As soon as it looks wet, move on. And then, put it in front of the fan, let it dry, do it again, okay? Should only take five, 10 minutes. We're gonna hit him again, and we're gonna do the same thing. When it looks a little bit wetter than it just did, we're gonna stop, call it done, make them look good, and we're gonna do it one last time. The reason is, is that we want that gloss coat to be like glass, to be hard, to basically uh, break up the surface tension of the wash and help flow better. Like, the model is a little bit more porous otherwise, and you're not gonna get the same results. Okay, wash game ready to get your black belt in the army painter wash system check this shit out mid brown we're using an ancient technique bottle cap lid we're going to use some strong tone which is basically their greatest most versatile wash we're going to throw that some of that in the scientific ratios of course dark tone which is basically black we're going to basically darken these two different browns we're basically going for kind of a dark brown little black a light brown military shader which is a dark green we're gonna throw that in the mix and we've got a dark black brown green. We're gonna use some flow improver and then we're gonna use an old school check, uh, technique, quick shade mixing medium from Army Painter. This is basically the washes without pigment. We're gonna add a third cap and we're just gonna kind of start mixing them back and forth and get the ratio correct using this blend that I have developed here in the beats lab in the trenches of the next level painting system and we're going to create a nice thin wash but not like as thin as a gw wash but not as thick as out of the pot army painter wash something in between okay now the army painter washes are the best washes in the game in my opinion the most versatile you can really mitigate a lot of coffee staining with these techniques i've showed you here and now we're going to go watch this number three paintbrush blah, blah. 
look at how much wash I laid down. Starting from the top, letting gravity pull it down. But you see, it, it operates more like an Elmer's glue. It doesn't really drain. So that gives us time to manipulate the wash. So we're going to keep reaching for wash. But you see, I'm also reaching for our Straight Up Flow Improver Quick Shade Blend. And I'm using that to smooth it out. When I see the wash drying over a big flat surface, I basically reach in for a little bit more of our solution and I smooth it out. Dry the brush off, dab it, use it like a sponge, remove it. Basically, we have time to work here because of the gloss varnish and the flow improver slowing the dried time down. So just manipulate it and stay engaged. I call this active washing. You have to be fully present in this step. It's not like you can just fire and forget. You see, we did a lot of manipulating there. Pushed the wash, pulled the wash, dried the wash. Same thing. Look, we're going to just slap it on the shoulder, grab some of our solution, start pulling it down, let it get into the crevices. It's going to cover the muscle bellies and the flat, smooth areas. It's going to sit there for a bit, a minute, but you don't have a lot, a lot of time. You have to immediately, once you get the wash settled, start reaching for the solution, start dabbing the brush off and start pulling some of the excess away from the flat areas of those muscle bellies so it doesn't get a weird staining effect and and not that it would really stain it would just wouldn't look as good as it could the the army painter technique doesn't really stain all that much if you if you build it up too much and it, and it sits in a crack it might look a little weird we're going to do it again on his other arm just to show you guys same deal slathering the wash on get it completely engaged and encapsulating that arm and then we're going to start slicing it up using some subtracted me subtraction method using our solution and drying the brush off as we go using it like a sponge look at that it's staying where it needs to stay it's creating some nice blends we're basically able to do kind of a ghetto wet blend here and he's looking his best we're going to let him dry kind of time lapse it real quick with a cutaway uh but you can see we got a lot of definition a lot of contrast but we're definitely a more realistic skin tone than all those orcs I showed you at the beginning of the video. Now we're going to let it dry overnight, hit it with a matte varnish, bring it back off of the gloss varnish, and we're ready to paint. Anyway guys, thanks for checking out this video. I know it's been crazy out there. And as always, thank you for your support. Play on, players.